going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. On today's video, we're gonna open up this Plum Quick motor, stick it on our little club card DS, 48 volt series cart. This is not a Sepix cart. And on some previous videos, we did a speedometer, we did an Ultrax controller, we did lithium batteries in it. And today we're gonna do this Plum Quick motor. Now, I've never had this Plum Quick motor to begin with, and I wanted to see exactly what this right here would do on a basic setup like we have. And in one of my last attempts at filming this, I went ahead and opened the box. Now Plum Quick takes pride in shipping their product. As you can see here, they put staples in here. And this one right here, top flap, had about six or seven staples across the top. Once I got that open, we had more staples holding this side piece together here. Right there. So, with that being said, don't cut yourself when you're opening these boxes. Get you a tool, try to open it with a tool as well. The cardboard, a bunch of cardboard in these boxes. The cardboard protects the front of the motor, the sides of the motor, the middle portion of the motor, and the back of the motor as well. Like this right here. They have it cut out, specially designed to go right around the motor. Then the first thing that I'm gonna run into here is gonna be my warranty card. So please read this first if you get a motor from Plum Quick. Kind of like some do's and don'ts with one of their motors. Next thing you run across, I got my invoice from where I ordered it. And they also have some stickers included as well. Next up, I'm gonna go ahead and put the motor down and we'll lift it up on the table and I'll show you exactly which one I got. The Plum Quick Rattlesnake motor. This is the motor for the Club Car DS platform here. And as you can see on the motor, it's for a series cart. So you have your S1 and S2, along with your A1 and A2. You got your copper studs, nuts, and washers. So this motor weighs like 40 pounds, which I also like that they include a handle when lifting these motors a lot easier than trying to lift it the other way. So when you're installing the motor, you can actually hold it in place while you're putting it on, which is great. Now we can sit around and look at this motor or we can put it on the golf cart and see exactly what it'll do. Just to always remove the negative or positive main cable from the battery pack so we don't accidentally short circuit anything with our wrenches. I'm gonna go ahead here and remove the ground from the battery pack. Now to make it a little bit easier, I'm going to remove the motor and controller access panel here so we can get to some of the top bolts on top of the motor. I'm also gonna remove the seat here before we drop the rear end. So you're gonna need some basic tools to complete a job like this. Your basic hand tools really. Now in order to remove the wires or the cables from the motor, you're gonna need two half inch wrenches. The reason we need two wrenches to remove a motor stud one wrench is going to hold the stud and the bottom nut, and the top wrench is going to loosen the top nut exposing the wire. So just note that when you're going to remove a motor, you don't want to start twisting and actually start turning the stud inside the motor. You're going to have more damage, really. So in order to remove the studs here, we have our two wrenches. This is a half inch wrench. One side of the wrench is going to be ground down. The other wrench is going to be a regular wrench. Now I have two half inch wrenches because on these motors, you have the stud. The stud has a nut at the very bottom. Then you have the ring terminal for the cable. Then you have a nut at the top. This ground down wrench right here, what it's going to, purpose is gonna serve is to hold the bottom uh, nut into place so the stud doesn't start turning on the motor. Maybe kind of hard to see. There's not a lot of excess room in these club card DS's here. I don't know if you can see that or not, but my lower wrench is in place. My top wrench. I'm going to sit on to the place here. We're going to turn it to the left. Now, before we can remove the motor from the transaxle or the rear end, there's going to be four bolts we need to remove. The first one's going to be right here. Grab yourself a half inch uh, wrench. In my case, this is a ratcheting wrench. I should be able to get it off with that. We're going to save this hardware here 
So we will reuse this once we put the new motor back into its place. Now in order to remove the motor, there's gonna be four bolts holding it on. Three is gonna be on the top. Those are gonna take a 7 16 inch wrench. There's one on the front, lower front to be exact, and I've already removed that one and it took a half inch wrench. Now once you remove these right here bolts away from the motor, the motor will not just drop, it's actually slid onto the shaft, and I'll show you all of that here in just a second as well. So we're gonna retain this hardware here and reuse it on the new motor, so we're gonna put it out of the way. Now as you can see, all the bolts have been removed from mounting the motor to the transaxle. Next, I'm gonna just take my hand and I'm gonna lift up and down a rocket and back and forth motion. This motor probably weighs 25-ish pounds, so it's not as quite as heavy as the new motor that's going in. Uh, came off pretty easy there. And there we go, the motor is now off. Now as you can see, the motor is off. If yours has this bushing right here, actually slides onto the shaft. You can remove that and the spring behind it as well. We don't need that for the Plum Quick motor install. Now I have the motor and it's on a piece of cardboard. I did this so we can get the motor uh, into the back of the cart or underneath the back of the cart without scratching it up. This motor here is gonna weigh around 45-ish pounds, so it's quite heavier than the motor that we just removed. It may take you a couple of times to put it on there. What I'm running into now is aligning this shaft up with the shaft here. Now, since I have the part brake on and the wheels are touching the ground, the shaft isn't wanting to move, but the motor being up against the shaft isn't sliding on there, um, you know, just as easy as we would like it for it to. I will say having the handle on the Plum Quick motor helps out a lot. I can use my left hand to pick up the front of the motor I can use my, my right hand to adjust the level of it on the back side. And there it is, it's in place. So once you get the motor on, you wanna slide it all the way on until it hits this transaxle mount right here. You never want to take a bolt here and compress the motor against the transaxle. You always want to make sure the motor slides on freely, and you're only using the bolts to tighten the motor to the transaxle. That's the only reason you're using the bolts. After you replace these bolts here, remember to replace the one on the bottom front as well. Now what I just did is I just rocked the motor a little bit until I found the sweet spot for that bolt. And I picked up the back of the, the uh, motor just a tad bit to help the um, bolts align into the, uh, the holes that are, are holding the motor on. Now we need to replace the cables on top of the motor. Remember, it's best to use a two wrench method. One wrench on the lower nut of the stud while you're tightening the top nut of the stud. That way the stud does not start to turn and you damage the motor before you can even use it. I'm gonna go ahead and button this right here, step back up and I'll meet you out on the road. So we're stopped here, you can see. Let's hit it again. We'll get see what we get at the end of the road down there.
There we go, guys. We did 30 with just a plumb quick motor upgrade, all tracks upgrade, and lithium batteries. We're already at 30. All right, guys, what do you think? We put the motor on it. We went from 15 to, I want to say we seen 30. I had to look down and look up at the same time. So I know we were in the upper 20s. I know that. I'm sure we hit 30. And I'll have to go back on the footage and check it out. So to wrap this thing up, 10, 11 stock, 12, 13 uh, with the lithium batteries. Then it went up to 15 on the controller. And then we get to like, let's say 30 on a motor, the Plum Quick Rattlesnake motor. This thing right here for a little series cart, it boogies pretty good. Now I'm sure we could put some um, speed gears in this right here and change the rear ratio, but we would probably lose torque as well as gain speed. I don't want to do that. It still has a back seat on it. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with 30 miles per hour on a little DC series golf cart, especially it was going 10 miles per hour last week. Now it's going 30 now. Great. So next video, we're probably going to need to replace the bushings on the rear end because once I took it for a test drive, man, I just heard nothing but squeaks and rattles and it just crazy. So while the cart was jacked up previously, I took the, um, the jack, jacked the rear end up, you know, see what the golf cart would look like say if we lowered it and if we, uh, uh, decreased the amount of room that we have between the uh, top of the tire and the fender and that looked pretty cool I'm not saying that we're gonna do it but that looked cool I know I want to do something with these um, these backrests in the near future change the seat covers maybe do a new floorboard we need a stereo on this thing uh, the, the body either needs to be wrapped or lined it needs to be painted or wrapped we need to do something with that and maybe even get rid of these hideous looking wheels on here because be honest with you, I don't like them. But other than that, guys, I appreciate you watching the video. And until next time, we'll see y'all later.